British infantry get to step up from a boxy battle taxi to an infantry fighting vehicle, with the release of the Warrior for Team Yankee. The FV-510 Warrior is better armed and armoured than the FV-432 APC it partially replaced. Join me to take a look at this new plastic 15mm kit from Battlefront. This is the Warrior Platoon box set for British forces in Team Yankee. It's been released as part of the new British forces, giving British players access to an infantry fighting vehicle to support and transport infantry. The FV-510 Warrior was Britain's answer to vehicles like the BMP and Bradley. Warrior was an infantry carrier that also mounted a turret and gun. However, the British design didn't include firing ports for the infantry. British Doctrine had the infantry fighting dismounted, with the IFV using its weapons in support. Warrior has a three-man crew and transported an infantry section of seven men. Infantry entry and exit was via a large rear door. The two-man turret mounts a Raden 30mm cannon with a coaxial 7.62mm chain gun. Optics were initially passive infrared, but were later upgraded to thermal sights. Mobility of the Warrior enabled the troops to keep pace with the Challenger tank, something the earlier FV-432 APCs couldn't manage. Warrior has seen action in the Gulf War in 1991, as well as Bosnia and Afghanistan. Alongside the upgraded optics, applique armour has also increased protection. Warrior continues in British service today, with upgrades planned to extend the design's life to 2040. If we look at the back of the box, we can see two images of completed kits. One is the standard IFV, while the other is the up-armoured version with additional armour panels on the front and sides. There's also an assembly diagram that shows the kit parts and assembly. The up-armoured and optional parts are shown in red. That makes this nice and easy to follow. Parts count is quite low, as you would expect from a wargaming model, but there are some small detail parts. The box set contains five plastic warrior kits and six unit cards. There are no decals. Decals are now a product you need to buy separately. There are three resin commander figures included that aren't mentioned on the box. Let's look at the plastic. Warrior comes on two sprues of olive green plastic. There looks to be a good level of detail and the kit is crisply moulded, on par with other recent Battlefront kits. The first sprue has the turret pieces. The turret has the gun and mantlet moulded all together as a single piece. Of my box of five, four were fine, but one sprue had a bendy gun barrel. I plan to try hot water to remedy the bend. The other parts here are the lower turret piece and some upgraded hull armour packages. The other side of this sprue has the hull rear, turret external stowage rack, smoke discharges and side skirts. These skirts are for the standard warrior. I had some fun fitting these during assembly. Note that the left skirt has a cutout to accommodate the side hatch, so it's important to put the right one on the right side and the right way up. There's a locating bar on the rear face of the side skirts that fits between the hull and tracks to give a solid attachment and correct placement. I would suggest dry fitting and then gluing this to the hull sides before assembling the hull, just to be safe. I had one skirt where the locating bar seemed too large for the gap it needed to fit into. I had to carve it off to get a good result. The tolerances here are pretty tight. You might be okay, but attaching these first will give you a chance to adjust it to fit before undertaking the hull assembly. The second sprue has the upper and lower hull, tracks, up-armoured side skirts, commander's hatch and optional Milan missile launcher. The upper hull has lots of good detail including engine grills and troop hatches. These should all come up well when dry brushed during painting. The tracks and hull sides are moulded as a single piece. The hull parts all interlock and again the join lines are placed along visible edges. The warrior kit has chamfered edges but the parts lack the interlocking pins and guides of the MLRS kit. Getting the hull parts to interlock was a challenge. It took a lot of effort during assembly to avoid gaps. I'm still not sure I succeeded. 
Keep this in mind during assembly and make sure to test fit and maintain pressure while the glue dries to get the best result you can. These side skirts are for the up armoured warrior. They have the same locating bar on the rear, so again it might be best to fit these before the hull assembly if you're building this version. The last parts are the commander's hatch and the Milan launcher. Milan is an option, so maybe check out the lists for British forces before you decide to fit this or not. So that's the plastic for the warrior. As you heard, I had some issues during assembly. The end result looks okay, but don't expect this to just fall together. Parts tolerances are tight in a few places, and the hull parts lack some of the sophisticated locating engineering of the MLRS kit. Getting the five interlocking hull parts that need to go together at the same time organised and held tight to minimise gaps was a challenge. I think I even had to use my eyebrows to hold bits together at one point. Is it a bad kit? No, not really. But some of the engineering and tolerances here will require care during assembly. Expect to dry fit and sand parts to get the best result. Once they're built, how will they work on the table? Let's look at using Warrior in Team Yankee. One of the cards in the box is for the Warrior Mechanised Platoon. This gives the stats for the mechanised infantry teams who have Warrior as a transport. These are very similar to the FV432 mechanised infantry from the Iron Maiden book. You can also field Warrior as a Milan team transport, or attach the Milan directly to the vehicle in the Warrior anti-tank section, and fire it from under armour. But I want to look mainly at the Warrior transport card. I'll look at the up armoured card. The standard card is similar with lower front and side armour, and without the mounted Milan option. Warrior Up Armoured is a tank attachment with the applique armour, infrared and Milan mount special rules. Each vehicle can take three infantry teams as passengers. The applique armour rule means Warrior's front and side armour is 13 against heat warheads. This armour is most effective against chemical energy warheads like heat, but only affords a little more protection against kinetic energy penetrating rounds. Infrared means Warrior rolls twice for night visibility and uses the higher score. Milan mount means Milan missile teams may fire while passengers in the vehicle. This might be a good way for British players to keep their Milans firing under artillery bombardment, as tank teams can't be pinned. Note that by including the missile attack on the vehicle's card, the Milan counts as the vehicle's attack. Warrior can't fire the main gun or machine guns in the same shooting step if it fires Milan. Skill and Assault ratings are 3+, while the Courage, Morale, Remount and Counterattack are 4+. The Assault and Counterattack stats are each one better than the FE432's rating. I guess this increase reflects the superior capability of Warrior, making the troops more willing to take the fight in close to the enemy. It would also make doctrinal sense, as the Warrior would be used more aggressively in infantry support, rather than the FE432 which was more just a transport. Warrior is hit on 4+, pretty standard for NATO units. Front armour is 5, side 3 and top 1. Remember front and side are 13 for heat weapons like RPGs, otherwise use these stats. The standard warrior has front armour 3 and side 2. Having a front armour of 5 creates a dilemma for British players. This hits the deep reserves armour limit of some missions, which limits how many of these units can be deployed on table initially. Worth keeping this in mind. Tactical move is a woeful 6 inches or 15 centimetres. This is slower than the FV432, but if you have a look at the back of the card, Warrior gets the sneak and peek special rule. Warrior can actually tactical move 10 inches or 25 centimetres as long as it doesn't fire the main gun. This model's using the unstabilised gun on the move. Cross is a 3 plus. Speaking of the main gun, the Raden 30mm cannon has a 24 inch or 60cm range with a halted rate of fire 3 and moving of 2. Anti tank is 10 with a 5 plus firepower. The gun has the anti helicopter rule, giving it a chance to shoot at helicopters. The coaxial 7.62mm chain gun has a 16 inch range with a rate of fire 4 halted and 3 on the move. AT is 2 with a 6 firepower. The passenger-fired Milan missile has a minimum range of 8 inches or 20 centimetres, 
and reaches out to 36 inches or 90 centimetres. It can only be fired if Warrior is carrying a Milan missile team as a passenger, and only from the Holt. AT is 21 with a 3 plus firepower. Milan gets the guided rule, which means no to hit penalty over 16 inches, and is a heat warhead. If we look at the Warrior mechanised platoon on forces, Warrior costs exactly twice what the same infantry teams cost with FV-432. Four GPMG teams, three Carl Gustav teams and a 2-inch mortar team with four Warriors is 14 points. The smaller three-vehicle platoon is 10 points. You can add two Milan missile teams and another Warrior for four points. This takes the full-size platoon total to 18 points. Again, this is double the cost for the FV-432 equivalent. This point's cost is for the standard Warrior. You can upgrade all the IFVs to the up-armoured versions for just one point for the whole platoon. This takes our full-strength platoon to 19 points. Infantry used to be a good, cheap cornerstone choice for a British force. Given taking the same infantry with Warrior as double the points, this becomes a significant investment. You'll have to decide if the extra capability of IFEs over MG armed APCs is worth it. Also remember that up armoured warriors will be affected by the deep reserves rule found in some missions like No Retreat and Bridgehead. In these missions the Defender's Force can only start the game with one tank unit of front armour 4 or greater, or one aircraft unit deployed on the board. The rest are placed into reserve. This includes any transport teams accompanying infantry, as they must deploy together. If you plan to choose Defend when using battle plans, it might make more sense to take Standard Warriors or FV-432s. Their lower armour rating will avoid the deployment limitation. Otherwise, you might end up with a greater proportion of your force in reserve than you expect. The Deep Reserves rule will potentially affect other upcoming infantry transports like Bradley's and BMP-3s when they get released. Something to be aware of going forward. Anyway, that's the Warrior IFE for Team Yankee. Despite some challenges with the build, this ends up as a nice model if you take enough care. There are also a few options to try out, with Milan transports and an AT section as well as the infantry transports. I've been waiting for these for a while. I plan to use some as infantry transports to replace my FE-432s. My playstyle's a bit defensive, so maybe just standard warriors rather than up-armoured ones. The warrior anti-tank section is interesting, but I'm worried it might be a bit fragile with only two vehicles in the unit. Always an iffy proposition, it's even more fragile under the second edition morale rules. Have you built any warriors? Did you have any issues? And do you have any suggestions to get the best build? How do you plan to use your warriors? Will you choose the standard or up-armoured version, and how will this affect how you play on the table? Maybe let us know in the comments below.